Hey everyone, it's Yishan here. Just a couple of things before we get into the video. Number one, if you enjoy the content, do please consider subscribing. It helps out a lot. And number two, I've got a couple of affiliate links, free ways to support the channel. Number one is my TCG player link. If you shop there, I get some of the money you send on the website. It costs you nothing extra. Number two is my Your Play Mat affiliate link. They make custom sleeves and mats. This is a custom sleeve right here. Check them out. If you use that affiliate link, you get 10% off. Without further ado, guys, let's get right into the video. Hey guys, it's Yishang here. Now, Burst of Destiny and Synchro Storm are coming soon, but before that happens, I wanted to show off a deck I've been having some decent success with, and that's my Golden Castle Grand Modern deck. I just, I, I'm always playing this deck, you know, you know, even when it's, I don't think it's really good. I always just love to test it out, sort of see how it fares in the meta. Um, and it's actually pretty good right now. Uh, I, I really like it, and there's a couple of adaptations that I've made in this deck. You can probably already see one of them here. We'll, we'll get into this card. Um, and why I think it's strong, but, you know, uh, this is a really, probably my, just my pet deck, my favorite deck, um, you know, sort of the deck I created with a lot of love and care, so <laughs> it always has a close place in my heart, but, you know, it's a really solid option for, for those of you that are Grand Maju fans or are looking for a new deck, this is really a great deck to get started with, um, and it's a lot of fun to play, and I feel like it really utilizes Grand Maju pretty well, um, and it's pretty consistent too. So let's talk about the deck, shall we? It's a deck profile. I'm going to go over some games as well. I've already talked too much. I wanted to make this sort of a quicker video, but we're playing the best level eights, um, the three alpha, the three Bigfoot, and the three Thunderbird. The thing I really like about the castle version, it allows me to play trade in, which allows me to go with Hextrude at, and, and, and play Lava Goal and play Gizmic. There's a lot of plus one, you know, trade in has just got so many good targets. And, and when you resolve it, it's a really, really good card. Makes the rest of your deck like more consistent. Um, so it's a really powerful card if you can consistently resolve it, especially in this deck with some of the plus ones. So um, just the best level eights. Gizmeg, of course, what this deck is built around. And then the dangers are pretty standard for just the best level eights that summon themselves. A lot of times you have cards in your hand that you don't want. Um, or you want to discard, so the dangers are are really, really good. And then we have the one Pankratops, just, you know, one of the best cards in the game. Triple Eater. Uh, Eater, I've been liking a lot in the meta. There's just a lot of good hits with it. Um, it helps just get that Gren out really quickly. Um, and yeah, so, you know, just one of my one of my favorite uh, cards here. So that is that. And we got Triple Gizmek. Um, so I'm trying this new thing with the Glyphs. So... Uh, for these of you that don't know, it's optimal if you want to open exactly one of a card in your opening hand to run exactly five of it when you're going second. Um, so that's just a general rule of thumb. If you are if you want to open exactly one of a card, the maximum chance of doing that is having five copies in your deck. Now, I used to run three Castle, two Glyph, but I saw on the Grand Maju Facebook page, and I can't remember who said this, but... <laughs> I thought they were joking for a second, but they said you should run three Glyph and two Castle, and I never thought about this before, but it actually makes some sense, right? You want to have more Castle targets in your deck. This is not a break. Now, this is unfortunately a problem in, in the sense that like Glyph is not as strong as Castle in some regards, right? Sometimes it's better just to have the Castle right away, you know? Droll and Longbird is an example, right? But... The Glyph is just overall a better card. And in those games where like it's just one card difference, like normal summoning a Glyph to pop up back row can make a big difference. I haven't had a, you know, a, a difference. And obviously, like if you banish two castles, you want to have a third one in your deck. But this has never happened to me just yet. And so I'm trying out this th three Glyph, two castle lineup instead. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the three Glyph, two castle. This is, <laughs> I played the Grand Magic for a while and I've never thought about this before. So I'm going to have to shout out the guy that 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 mentioned this um i feel like maybe people just ignored him because you know people like don't consider like other you know other people's like uh suggestions a lot of the times you know because they're so set in their own ways and i get a lot of suggestions for my decks but i like to think that i consider some of the interesting ones and this one was an interesting one so i just wanted to share it with you guys it's definitely a very interesting uh theory and it's <laughs> honestly it's very small but like when you're a grand magic connoisseur like myself like this stuff is like interesting to you right oh shit <laughs> so okay three three glyph two castle this is interesting uh triple grand maju just my favorite card in the game and then hex true just the the nuts off castle and then triple lava golem so i would have much rather preferred to play super polymerization in this spot uh but this card just sucks right now so i was thinking let's as what's like super polymerization but more generic it's more of the meta and lava golem came to mind and it's 
works well in the castle version because it doesn't, well, it takes up your normal summon, but not really because you can still use castle in the same turn as the lava golem. So this actually comes up quite a quite a bit, uh, especially if you open lava golem because you're pretty likely to have a castle in your hand. So I think it's just really effective in the meta right now. This deck doesn't really want to run droplets. I mean, you could maybe because it's so good right now, but you don't really want to. Plus lava golems like... 20 times cheaper, maybe, <laughs> so maybe more, honestly, maybe 100 times cheaper. So um, yeah, it's probably 100 times cheaper, depending, especially depending on the rarities. Um, and, you know, it, it just sort of does the thing. It can be bounced back with alpha if on really, really big boards, but it have like two negates and just a random monster. You just, lo oh my god, Lava Golem, the special alpha, bounce back the Lava Golem, special back the alpha, continue your plays. If you don't kill them next turn, you know, it's really good. Obviously, I prefer super, if Super Holly were good, because that just gives you a monster as well but this one only costs a card um yeah i like the one call vibe just because i mean there's so much stuff getting yeah people are just at, there's so much stuff to ash in this deck so having the call by is nice it's also just a randomly good defensive card uh and then the two castle like i said with the three life the one reborn just a solid card uh triple desires triple trade in and then triple triple tactics talent which i think is really just a really great card in the meta right now and really good for Gren Maju. It sort of does, it helps OTK, it helps keep your hand size up for your dangers to be more likely slash draw to your outs, or it helps go for the OTK when you look at your opponent's hand and make sure they don't have a hand trap to stop you. So really just solid. It does have some sort of like anti-synergy with Lava Golem because of the fact that honestly, if you're Lava Goleming sometimes, that you don't, like they don't activate monster effects, but I found that it doesn't really matter people still just activate monster effects anyway if you have this card in your deck so like you know they'll ask you still they'll, they'll still hand trap you so this card's just so good um and then side decks right so instead of playing the d shifter man I tr i'm trying the lava golem which i think is just more effective it's better to draw as a sixth card um but of course d shifter has its really good uses um so i have it in the side and then the side deck is actually really clean basically i got one d fissure one macro and then these back removals i'm you could play Twin. I just feel like Lightning Storm has really good like applications right now because it hits monsters as well. And then I've got the triple limits and the triple TC boos. Um, so a lot of floodgates to stun your opponents out for going uh, for his TC boos. Just pretty good right now in the meta. And then some limit for random stuff. And then of course macro and defissure for just almost anything, right? Um, so then we've got of course the extra deck. Now I'm trying out a Galaxy Eyes package. I'm not sure if this is necessary. It's the Cipher X Dragon. Um, my thought was I could use Galaxy, like I could go, if like I wanted to pop a lot of stuff, I could go Galaxy Cypher, steal a monster. The monster that I steal could put into Galaxy Cypher X Dragon, which then could be put into a Zeus later on. And then if I want to pop more stuff, I can use full armor and Cypher Blade. Unfortunately, Cypher Blade does not, cannot be used as an Xyz material for an Xyz summon. If it would, this would be almost better than the Gearsu package. Um, because then you could a a attach like one, two, three, four things to it with the two. So you'd have like three sends, which would be awesome, but not quite the case. Now, one thing that you should do, this is, this is just something I'm testing right now. Uh, cards you could also play, Seven Deadly Sins. This is like, um, I've been getting more and more sold on this card. But I think the, the so this is basically for the Dingirsu Zeus package. You go Dingirsu, Pain Gainer, stack this one on top. Now, of course, this one is a little different because, because, um, you know, because it doesn't get you to that third send, but it does give you 4k, which is just nice. Like sometimes you go ding send, you want to be able to attack something that has higher attack than 26. This is actually, this actually does come up sometimes. The second thing I would recommend if you don't go the galaxy guys packet is actually try a couple things. Well, first play like an extra Numeron dragon. I think that's good with Druglubian that comes up sometimes where your Druglubian lives. You could just detach another material, summon another summon another Numeron Dragon. Um, or, or, or actually, and play another Zeus. So the interesting thing I've noticed about Zeus sometimes is a lot of times you will spend your whole hand to sort of break your opponent's board, make a Zeus, right? You'll have the double send Zeus. You know, your opponent tries to play through it um, and, you know, baits out a bunch of your negates, right? It becomes your turn again, and sometimes I can't always kill on the crackback. So it's actually really nice if you have a five material Zeus, is to just have a second Zeus in your extra deck, because two sends is almost usually enough, but sometimes you can't kill on the crackback. So you slap another Zeus onto this, so now, because you can do it, you know, once a turn, right? So you attack with your Zeus, slap another Zeus on top of it. Now the Zeus has two materials. I find that's usually enough to seal the deal, and I feel like it's not being considered enough 
um, in, in the deck, a second Zeus. So I, I wanted to just throw that out, idea out there in the in the ether. See what you guys thought about it. Um, the rest of the deck, extra deck is pretty standard. I think these are all the best Xyz monsters. We got Lancelot, Hope Harbinger, you know, Santa Fon comes up uh, every once in a while. And then the Lynx, uh, definitely want to play Anna. This card comes up. Uh, I'll sort of talk about it maybe if I show it in the replays. And then uh, you could play Cerberus. That's just like the worst one. These two do come up, uh, the Phoenix and the Unicorn, you know, just for going for game with, you know, Eater or Glyph or random stuff like that. So, yeah, this is... um. This is the deck. Um, I'm just going to go straight from replays because I think it's always fun to watch some replays. So we're going to go over here and watch some replays. The first one we got against Quilly, Q-W-L-E-A. I don't really know, but we had a really good game. But I wanted to show this one. Um, so let's let's play it. Uh, so yeah, we had, we, had a, we had a good game for sure. So I'm going to just go to the opening hands here and sort of we will pause when we get the chance. Okay, so uh, he's got... Main tech rivalry of warlords is actually really, really good against our deck because we play TC Boo, so the obvious counter to our deck is rivalry. Um, yeah, this card's really good against our deck, and he starts out with a really, I mean, spoofing protocol rivalry. Got the Kunk, and he's gonna go and get the Faker right now. So like, this is not looking good for us, right? So I'm gonna just fast forward. He's gonna go there. And I open double lava golem, which isn't great against um, Altergeist, but we can still get the multi faker with it so it actually does come up now i end phase gizmet because i think i might need this to to push for game so that's just how that is okay so i top deck the glyph <laughs> there we go searching for the golden cat oh i searched for the hextrude an accident so i had to put that one back at the castle and then he goes protocol now this is weird so i was like okay maybe he'll summon out the multi faker now and then i could lava golem obviously in this matchup it, when they start with link rebo actually it's better to have super poly because you can super poly away the link rebo and the and the multi faker for a a starving venom but in this case we didn't go for he actually goes for the multi faker right away which i thought was like maybe strange i'm not sure what he did but then i get to lava golem him okay now, I go Golden Castle. He should have chained Rivalry right here. That would have been, like, I probably just can't win, honestly, um, um, through that, especially with his personal spoofing. So he should have chained Rivalry right here. Um, and I don't know why he didn't. Now I get this thing out, and he still doesn't activate Rivalry, and then I pop his thing. So that was a mistake by him, I think. Um, He's going to learn his lesson. He's, oh, and look at that. The desires into the double desires. Not what you want to see. So I go Ding Girsu here. Uh, I'm going to send, um, you know, some good stuff here. So he chains spoofing because he doesn't want, you know, he wants his marionette for next turn, which makes sense. So I end up sending the uh, the thing. Now, I should have used uh, Gizmic Orochi to pop uh, the, like, it doesn't matter any of these, really. I, I just didn't. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, oh, maybe it's because if this was a trap, I wanted to be able to summon it back. Don't exactly remember the, the case, but um, anyway, so I attack the Link Rubo. I believe I have to attack again here because of the fact that I don't think a replay counts as being battled if I don't declare another attack. So I just run into the Lava Golem. That's why I put it in defense. Um, I take that, and then I do the... This one I was running the Seven Sins, but I wasn't running an extra Zeus for some reason. I don't know why I was doing that. So that was a mistake on my part. I should have been running a second Zeus. So, okay, I'm going to fast forward to his turn. I clear now. Why do I clear now? Because I can't afford him to summon Marionetta, and then I can't... I, I don't want to lose my Zeus, because Zeus chain protocol, like, I'm in trouble, right? So, he summons Marionetta, and then I Zeus. Like, I don't want to lose my Zeus, because it's my only body. So, I figure I'm going to go now. And then I figure Marionetta, by itself, can't really do anything, because I'll just end phase the trap. So, I feel, I'm feeling okay. So, okay, next play. Um, he draws Pot of Prosperity, which is good, but luckily, like... He has to basically, he's really just looking for an Imperm here, basically. Like, Imperm is his out, and he's got a decent shot at it because he doesn't have uh, any Imperms out of the deck. I assume he runs three. Um, so basically, that's what I have to fade here. I am able to fade. We see a lot of powerful old men coming out, but none of them are as good as Cyber Dragon in this um, in this moment. So Skill Drain, I'm not too worried about it, obviously. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, Marionetter. I'm just going to wait till he activates the effect. And then here comes the Zeus, because I'm not going to let him, you know, I can't let him summon back a bunch of stuff, right? Faker, summon, summon, you know, a bunch of stuff. Okay, I know he's got Skill Drain in his hand, um, and that's okay. So he sets, and then I go end phase Gizmek. Now, if this wasn't Skill Drain, obviously second Zeus would be good here. 
uh, if he's had some way to like deal with the Gren. Um, now, uh, I have a decision here. I definitely want to normal summon the Gren. I need to force up this skill drain regardless. Altergeist is not very good with just one card. It needs like a trap to activate. So I, I normal this Gren. This Gren actually serves a purpose in that it's going to force the skill drain out here. Um, that makes all of his top decks just pretty bad, basically. Like, he's got to draw, like, Nadir Servant or, or some crazy thing like that to, to even have, like, a chance, right? So, um, Skill Drain is just going to force all the, the Alter guys, you know. They usually use this Skill Drain in conjunction with Protocol because they then then the things can't be negated. Um, but by itself, it's actually pretty fair in this matchup because it negates his stuff, too. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so I attack... Uh, with these two, and then obviously on the Gren Maju, he's going to skill drain me. So we had a really interesting match so far, um, thanks to him not activating rival. He draws Melisig, right? Again, Melisig would have been a pretty good draw here, except for the fact that it does nothing because he's under his own skill drain, so it can't really attack directly. He could kill my Gren for 500 points of damage, but again, I forced up his skill drain earlier, so... Um, we this this one looks like it's going to be yeah wrapped up for me so side decking i just basically i took out the lot wheels because i don't actually think they're that good and put in like back row removal basically right um they just happened to be a case and i figure like he'd be more careful with his multi fakers in this game especially after he saw this now his hand is pretty good he's got rivalry skill drain um and you know he's gonna do he's gonna do it to me so he summons the spellcaster because he has the rivalry makes sense um yeah i was like okay i i think i made a mistake here i well i desires first which makes sense just trying to get a um trying to get a back removal card i didn't get it um so we're in trouble here especially because he has an ash uh, i normally grand just hoping that like, i can somehow get this thing to enough attack to attack for game it's just unlikely though um just probably not gonna work so okay i go this one pop this special and then he does the right thing now he's gonna not now he's not gonna wait he's gonna flip up the rivalry that's game um that's really good i can't beat that so game three um i decided to go first now this is like an example where like if the alternate player doesn't open multi faker the, the the castle deck is just gonna pick apart all the back row eventually there's like no stopping it, right? As long so he didn't open a floodgate. Even I didn't open like a big trap. Like this is what the castle deck is good at. It's good at picking apart back row and, and cards like this. So I really like it because it punishes weak starts. And I'm gonna go Glyph the Phantom Bird, right? And I honestly probably should have desired after I went for the castle just to look for a back row card. Um, but I didn't I sort of don't get punished for it because I go this desires. And I draw two, right? And then I also triple tax. I draw two. I don't find like a lightning storm, like a dead lightning storm. So I honestly, I don't get punished. And, and now with this many cards, like it's four backer with no multi faker. As long as he doesn't have personal spoofing, like I'm basically golden. Um, so I go alpha. He strikes that. That's one backer out of the way. Um, you know, Bigfoot, chain protocol. Okay, so that's dead. But this makes me really don't and unless this is personal spoofing again personal spoofing that's my biggest worry but it doesn't seem like he has it so i'm gonna go here uh and then i'm gonna summon out the eater of millions and i'm gonna summon out another eater of millions so i got these are some big boys here 2800 a pop right now plus 24 that's enough for game so i'm going to pressure him immensely here so let's fast forward here attack um he's gonna take all of them he's gonna imperm one but again right alter guys cannot really play with one card um because they need to act, be able to activate a trap to get that multi faker out so obviously okay he's still you know mariander's not gonna work he needs to find a way to faker first right he doesn't have faker access yet so that one card mariander is not gonna work so let's continue now this this uh nightmare phoenix is going to just discard this extra ttt this does nothing right if he activated this first he summons back his mariander i can phoenix pop it if he chains into my phoenix it still destroys the mariander he has to like chain link one try to summon chain link two, shuffle it back um, and this is just not going to cut it right again. Altergeist with one card, uh, just not going to cut it. Um, doesn't really have any good outs. And that's duel number one. Okay, so that was a really good duel. Uh, the, the other duels probably won't be as long. This one against um, a man, Gwimitz. Um, So we'll take a look at this duel. 60 card variant here. Um, and, you know, we're looking at a good hand. This hand this, the hands usually look good in this deck. Uh, so he's going for these Thunder Dragon combos, boom, Chaos Space in 60, GG. But he already has the Black Dragon, so it's a little awkward. 
Um, you know, he does his little dragon linker shenanigans, special summons this one, makes the chaos space, woohoo, special add back, just standard stuff, makes a predator plant verte anaconda, adds the black dragon. So it's a pretty tame board, just a dragoon with like nothing in his hand. So not a great hand. I mean, he opened double evenly match in 60 and decide and it goes first. It's a little strange, but hey. Uh, so I go in phase gizmic. Why am I doing this? Why don't I go in phase gizmic? Um, well, I wanted to get extra cards managed because I'm sensing a very weak board here, a, very, a board that's very weak to Gren. I want to be able to get 16 cards banished if I need it, right? So that's why I go in phase. I already have a trade in target for this Thunderbird. I'm, at this point, I don't actually know that this back row is like fake. So um, yeah, so I do this, he's going to pop it. Uh, so this makes sense because this, this card is just totally useless in his hand. So I'm fine trading that. I go trade in. He probably should have negated the trade in, but it's okay. I go, I draw just two bricks, but it does give me, like, it keeps my hand advantage high. So this Thunderbird succeeds. God bless. I draw Glyph, which is actually a fantastic draw. So I go and grab the Stromberg, and then I normal this just to make sure. And right now I'm just trying to force out this Dragoon. So I just, I pop this. He doesn't do it. So I'm like, okay, I'll just go Dingirsu. Um, because they're almost always going to negate this, um, and then I'm able to triple tax this. is 4k, by the way, so that's enough for game. So that's sort of what happens here. Game two, I don't exactly know if he's going to go first or second. You know, like, I never know online. So I, I only put in Macro, Cosmos, uh, and some other, like, cards. So I, I, I kept in the Law of Golems. And it's a good thing I did, because we're going to watch him combo off. It's really interesting. Uh, but it's just basically chaos space things, you know, chaos space with the thunder dragons is going to do its stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to, we're going to watch him combo, do his thing, IP, get another matrix. I actually make a mistake here. I forgot he had a matrix in hand. Like, I don't know why I forgot. I was like, does he have a matrix in hand? I don't, I don't think so. And then I, I made a mistake later, but okay. He's going to have three negates, which is a little awkward, right? Cause like, uh, I usually, um, you know, like two is usually like enough, but three is quite a bit. I have to really think about what I want to hit here. I eventually I go for the these two because I feel like um, that IP is the, like, it costs the most to use. Whereas I feel like these two don't really cost anything. And if I don't get rid of them, it's going to be a big problem on the follow-up. So I get rid of these two and I go for this. And he sh makes a mistake. He should just pop this. He should have just ip got rid of this right away. Um, but he didn't. So I'm able to, like, pop my Lava Golem first. And that's actually just important because, you know, gets rid of bodies. Um, so, like, like I said, I wanted to make sure, like, he didn't get anything. Like, this IP is the negate that cost him the card in his hand, right? So, oh, he, oh, so I, did, I forgot, right? He top decked the Matrix, right? So, I didn't actually know he had this Matrix. And then he, he Thunder Dragon's Fusion for Duo. I was hoping for a card, like... Battery Man Solar or something that I could use Macrocosmos against, but I couldn't. Um, so that was unfortunate, right? And I have a call by the game just sort of waiting to use it. He normal summons Alistair, which is not a great for me, but at least I can chain my Macrocosmos to it. So this card is useless. And then he goes and attacks into the castle. You love to see it. Um, and that's basically going to be game because now, like, my castle's popping off. I draw this stupid trade in. So I go for the Hextrude. Okay, so I guess I didn't know that he had this Matrix in hand. So I went for the greediest play possible, which is pop the back row, attack the Unicorn, buff the Hextrude, attack the Duo, so clear everything. Uh, obviously, that didn't work because he had a Matrix in hand. So that was annoying. But again, it you know it's not that big a deal. He uses the effect to put Thunder Dragon Fusion, but luckily he only has like two Thunders. Um, and then basically, I, I actually didn't need this Eater of Millions. This castle is going to just banish enough cards for me to get the grand finish. I have these dead trade-ins in hand. I actually cited out a trade-in, which is kind of crazy. Um, but then I normal summon the grand, and that's going to be game. So, interesting game there. And then one last game for the video, just to wrap it up here. Uh, this was an interesting one. So, this one, I actually lose the dice roll. It makes me go first. So I tried to decide what to do. I said, okay, well, maybe let, let, let's draw some cards. Maybe we get, like, a castle. Maybe we get, like, like two level eights. Um, you know, who knows, right? So I do this, um, and I get nothing. But I do get a call by the grave, which could save me. And he has a call by the grave, too. Look at that. Um, so I'm sort of just waiting. He goes, Reiki attack, pop his set, special summon this one, special summon this one from hand. Now, I'm a little bit confused as why he didn't discard one card to destroy one card on the field. I really feel like he should have. Um, maybe he thought this card was useless because I hadn't activated it and wanted to play around popping something. I don't know. I would have discarded something like 
discard this one? Who knows, right? But I would have discarded something for sure. Um, you know, I like popping my opponent's stuff. Um, and okay, so here we go. He makes the, the link. Now, I need to force out this link without going into battle phase because I want my Gren to, to do stuff, right? So here's what I do. I go Eater. Now, he didn't actually have to do this on the summon. I would have forced it. I would have made the um, the Link 1, the Relinquished Anima, and forced the Unchained Soul of Rage to, to do his, his quick effect. Um, so this was really nice sort of to have that Relinquished Anima in your extra deck. But he does it for me anyway. I don't have to waste the anima. So I go tactics, draw two. Whew, draw some bangers. You see that I draw alpha plus a danger. So alpha is real good in this matchup. Boom, special it. Bounce that link back. Thank you very much. Special it back. Now we're going here. Now I don't get rid of the Gren because I feel like, okay, if my Thunderbird hits, I'll be like, if my Thunderbird discards the Gren, I'll be happy, right? Because I get two level eights and I get to sort of recycle through my hands. So I'm happy. Um, so I draw that. He, he hits the, um, the Bigfoot, which is great because... I literally can just pop this and then not have to worry about it. I'm just going to call by the grave the thing. So, okay. That really works out for me. And then I go ding, pop the set. And then it's just going to be game here as I have Eater Gren follow up. So that'll do the trick. I just keep the Zeus package in my extra deck, but this is enough for game. Um, so we're going to go on to game two. That was, you know, a nice little uh, showing there. And then, of course, I know he's playing Unchained. So I put in TC Boot because it's like really my only good floodgate against him. The macro and D Fissure, they're okay, but they don't like they don't really do anything. So um, just put in the good cards, right? You, you know, so I draw this uh, real nice. Go Glyph Castle. So I like this start because I get to protect my TC Boot with a rank gate. I really like that about this deck. Um, that's why I really like playing the floodgates here. So he kaijus me, but it's like, okay, I still have the floodgate, right? And then he kaijus me, and then again, forgets about the castle. <laughs> I, I love this card sometimes. And then, of course, I'm just going to do this, summon this, and I'm just going to... The castle's going to die, since I have nothing left in my deck. And then I'm just going to flip everything to attack. And just, you know, I'm not, not playing into Torrential Tribute. I know this deck runs into torrent, runs Torrential Tribute, so there's no really reason at all. To, to summon <laughs> so just throwing everything to attack and, and attack for game not gonna fall for that one um so yeah that is the three duels uh, just i hope you guys sort of enjoyed this video it was a little bit more laid back a little bit more casual um but you know i really like this deck and i think it's a lot of fun so you know let me know what you guys think of lava golem let me know what you guys think of the five castle stuff um yeah all that stuff oh lost connection there but you know let me know what you guys all think of that stuff a lot of, uh, you know, this deck's so much fun. So just a lot of, always, always stuff to talk about. <laughs> if you're like me, at least, anyway. Um, so I think that's it for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.